This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Eternal God, our Father, we are so grateful for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Thank you, Lord, for the day that you've given us, a day that we've never experienced before in our lives. But Father God, this is the day that you have made and we have purpose to rejoice and be glad in it. We ask that you would uh, speak into our lives through your word. And Father, we ask your blessings on your people. We pray that you'd open our ears that we may hear clearly what you're saying to the church. And Father God, we just ask your blessings for those who are at the point of desperation in their lives. We pray that you give them a word, Lord, that will cause them to look upon you. We ask that you would touch those who are have infirmities in their bodies. And Lord, as you've taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Last week we were talking to you about drifting, the danger of drifting. And we only got to one verse of scripture. And um, hopefully we'll get through all three verses this morning. But we want to thank you for for tuning in, for being a part of this uh, teaching experience. We want to thank you for your prayers and uh, the support that you're giving each other as you're reaching out to each other, encouraging each other, checking on the health of each other. We thank you for that. I received a few calls uh, concerning my family, and we truly appreciate that. Let's go into the word. Uh, our scripture text was in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. We um, shared with you verse 1, which begins with, So we must listen very carefully to the truth we've heard, or we may be in danger of drifting away. And we talked about what it meant to drift away. Uh, we shared with you on that last week. You may view your your uh, your notes from last week and uh, today we're coming to you with verse number two i'll read verse two three and four for the message god delivered through angels has always stood firm and every violation of the law and every act of disobedience was punished verse three so what makes us think we can escape if we ignore this great salvation that was announced first by the Lord Jesus himself and then delivered to us by those who heard him speak that shared the message of hope with us. And God, verse 4, confirmed the message by giving signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit whenever he chose mark that whenever he chose, whenever the Holy Spirit chose to um, confirm the word through signs and wonders. Uh, verse 2, for the message God delivered through angels has always stood firm, and every violation of the law and every act of disobedience was punished under the Old Testament. The writer, which some theologians believe that it is Paul, others uh, think not, but I will refer to as Paul. He is encouraging the Jewish believers to be steadfast in their relationship with Christ. They were being pressured to return to Judaism uh, by some of their friends and some of the other people 
who they were associated with to leave this relationship that they've developed through Jesus Christ, through his death, burial, and resurrection. And the temptation to return was great because they were at a place in life that they had never been before. They were being persecuted. And it wasn't a joyful experience uh, because they were suffering because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What they didn't realize and what they didn't comprehend is what Paul had told them in Romans chapter 8, verse 18. Paul informed the believers there. He says, consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that shall be revealed in us. I don't know if many of you have really experienced some of God's glory. I tell you, when you have confessed and um, repented remorsefully of your sins and invited the Lord Jesus Christ into your life, your burdens are lifted. The Spirit of God comes in and indwells within your heart and your soul. That is a part of some of the glory that we experience as we are redeemed by Jesus' blood. We confess with our mouth, we believe in our hearts, we confess that Jesus is Lord, and at that moment of confession, we're sealed by the Spirit of God. And what a feeling, what a relief and a release that we receive when we have that confession of faith. He reminds them to never disregard the truth that has been revealed in the Old Testament by angels, uh, angelic visitations, prophets, and the scriptures, which at times had eternal consequences. Remember the story of Lot, when the angels visited him to get his family out of Sodom and his wife turned and looked back, when they were instructed to not look back, to go, to leave immediately, and she turned and looked back, and as a result of her disobedience, she was turned into a pillar of salt. There are consequences that occur when we disregard the word of truth, the word that is spoken and revealed to us. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 says, in the New Living Translation, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. The Holy Spirit uses the word of God to reveal to us what is true. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. I'm so glad that the Holy Spirit is our teacher. He is the one to lead us and to guide us into all truth. God uses the scriptures to prepare and equip us, to equip his people to do every good work. The scripture is there to equip us to do every good work. So within you is the power and presence of the Holy Spirit to do good works. So God sometimes places us in positions and situations to do good works, to produce good works through trials, through tribulations, through times of testing, to produce good works. Because 
the goodness of God dwells within us. If the Old Testament prophets should be heard, how much more should the glory of the Lord himself, the God of glory, who came to earth as a man, spoke to men, not only spoke to men, but he suffered for the sins of men. And not only did he suffer for the sins of men, but he died for the sins of men. And then for the sake of us, he was buried, but he rose again for us. He died and was buried and rose from the grave for us, not for himself, but for us, because we deserve the punishment of our sins. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. So Jesus came to restore us to our rightful relationship with God. The punishment for disobeying the laws of the Old Testament was without mercy and forgiveness. You disobeyed the law, you suffered under the law. There was no such thing as grace. There was no such thing as God's favor in the, in the place of the judgment that followed disobedience. I am so grateful for God's gift of grace, and that gift of grace is in Jesus Christ. His unmerited favor to us unworthy sinners. God's grace, his amazing grace, has come, has been revealed to us through Jesus Christ. And God has given us a chance, an opportunity that we should not neglect, that we should not scoff at, that we should not ignore, but that we should submit to God's will. Well, what is God's will, some may say, and I clearly want to give you an understanding. Peter chapter 2, 2 Peter 3 and 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing. This is the will of God. He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come and submit their lives to him and have fellowship with him through repentance. That is the will of God, that no one perish. He takes no pleasure in the death of anyone. That was not his will. That was our choice. My brothers and sisters, his word is so powerful that all he has done is to sustain us by his word. We're sustained by the word of God. The son of God, Jesus, provided purification for all of our sins and has taken his seat at the right hand of God because his work is done. He awaits the day when the redeemed will join him. And I am so glad that we have the promise of being able to join the Lord, that he will meet us and we'll meet him in the air. What a promise. His presence, his everlasting presence, is what we long for, it's what we hope for, is what we desire to be in the presence of God. The lamb that was slain before the foundation of of the earth, God has given us an opportunity to be present with him. Verse 3, so what makes us think that we can escape if we ignore the great salvation that was first announced by the Lord Jesus Christ himself and then delivered to us by those who heard him? God has provided salvation for us to live forever. There is salvation in no other person. Jesus has declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father 
except by me. No man comes to the Father but by me. There is no other way, no other man-made religion that we can come to the Father. Now, some people have decided that, well, all roads lead to God. Well, that's good thought, but it's not true. It's a deception. All roads do not lead to God. All religions do not lead to God. Jesus said, I didn't say it, Jesus said that he was the one to God. He came. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's John 14, 6. Thomas had asked the question, how can we know the way to God? And Jesus told him that I'm the way to God. There are no man-made religions to God. They may sound good. They may ap whet your appetite, your, 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 your palate, your fleshly palate. It may sound good. It may look good. It may feel good. But Jesus is the only way. Don't be deceived. However, Christians still live in a world of cause and effect. Whatever you sow is what you reap. That law is an effect. Neglecting the truths of the faith and falling into sin has its consequences. We can't escape from our earthly problems to the loss of eternal rewards because of what we have chosen to do. For the unsafe person neglecting Jesus Christ Treating him with apathy or carelessness means certain and eternal death. I'm just not saying that. The word is saying that. John 3, 36. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. He who does not believe in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. There is only one mediator between man and God. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, and that man is Jesus Christ. There is no other way that we can get to God other than Jesus Christ. I am sorry that if you've been taught that uh, you can go to God through other medias. Paul can't. I can't pray to Paul and he pray to God and he pray to Jesus. I have to go to Jesus. I can't pray to Mary and, and have her to go to God. Jesus is the mediator between man and God. St. Peter is not the mediator. Jesus is the mediator between man and God. Some of you may find that uncomfortable, but that's true. The message of salvation was proclaimed not only by Jesus, but also passed along by those who heard, those who personally witnessed Jesus. Luke chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16. Look at these verses as references. Verse 4. And God confirmed the message by giving signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit whenever he chose. God validated the message of truth by the ministry of healing the sick, causing the lame to walk opening the sight of the blind, healing those who were deaf, raising the dead, casting out demons, all were done by men that received the truth, who followed Jesus Christ. They were able in the power of the Holy Spirit to exercise 
these ministry gifts that others who were witnesses of these miracles were confirmed in their faith that they became to rely upon God mark 16 chapters mark 16 17 through 20 says and these signs shall follow those who believed in my name they will cast out demons they will speak with new tongues they will make they will take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it will not by any means harm them they'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover so then, after the Lord had spoken these things to them, he, received, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. His work was done. And they went and preached everywhere, and the Lord working with them. How? How was he working with them? Confirming the word with signs and wonders. And I look for the day when God will continue to do that. And just because it's not happening in your neck of the woods, signs and wonders and miracles, it does not negate that God is done with it, that it's, a, that it's a something of the past. The word is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And in various situations, God will manifest himself through the working of miracles for the validation of the word of God. In closing, let's not drift from the truth which we have heard. From the truth which we've received. From the truth which we've experienced. And from the truth which we hope to be revealed at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your application again, knowing the truth is good, but abiding in the truth is more excellent. And as I stated before, it's over the top to be able to live in the truth in spite of what the world is doing. Live in the truth. Don't drift from what you've heard, what you know, what you've experienced, what you're anticipating. Number two, truth will set you free if only you're willing to obey it. We have a precious opportunity to allow the truth to work in us, to prove that Jesus is a reality, that he's alive because he's alive in each one of us and he is in us to do good works and the work that you're doing is a good work don't minimize the work that you're doing to introduce people to Jesus Christ I would rather suffer all things for the sake of the kingdom of God it's temporary it's temporary. Whatever you're suffering is momentary. There is nothing in this world compared to the glory that will be revealed in us when the day arrives, when we meet the Lord. God bless you, love you, praying for you, and be encouraged to know that he is with you always, even unto the end of the age. Until we meet again, I love you, I miss you, let's pray. Eternal God our Father, we pray for the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit to rest upon your people. And as we keep the faith, Lord, have your way in our lives. Amen.